I've had awfully good luck. Being in the right place at the right time. I, I went to Europe because I heard they were casting a movement theater company. And I had a, a contract, uh, yes, a contract to perform at Harvard University. That was important to me. So I said to the people involved in Europe, I will come the day after my performances at Harvard University are over. And when I got there, the director of the company said, uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've taken the last man that I'm going to take. Uh, I don't have any more room to take anyone else. And I was sad. I looked around at the company for a while and I said to her one day, you don't have a stage manager. And she said, oh yeah. I said, I have stage management experience and I could create your props and, and run your sound and things like that. And she said, well, if you do that, I'll give you your classes for free. And I said, deal. The second night of a three week engagement, an actor fell off a motorcycle going home, broke his shoulder. And she said, Mark, can you do his parts? And I said, yeah, I know them. Have to brush them up, you know, have to polish them up. But uh, that's sort of how I backed into a role with a Paris theater company. My name's Mark Thompson. Professionally, I go by the name Mark Conway Thompson. I use my middle name. I have an undergraduate degree from Mount Union, which was Mount Union College when I was here. I did uh, additional professional formal studies in Europe, in Paris, at the uh, School of Movement Theater of Eli Alasevich. I did some grad school studies at, uh, at Pitt, University of Pittsburgh. And I'm here because uh, when uh, Kevin Kern came here, mutual acquaintances resulted in our coming to know each other a little bit vaguely, and we had conversations, thought about how we might someday do a project together, and he came up with this one. Mm -hmm. And when he came to me and offered it, I was uh, interested enough uh, to bite the hook, and here we are. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill. I think I'm in the best possible category of being an actor. You know, they say if, if you can do anything else in this life besides professional acting, go do it, because professional acting will break your heart. And in some cases it does, and in lots of cases, it's much better than that. But I was the guy who couldn't imagine doing anything else. I do hear tell her. I go into my studio virtually every day, and I see my work as consisting of four things. I have to maintain and improve the instrument. I also have a, a physical vocabulary that I work at. And then I do what I call research, researching what movement in the hands of an actor can express. And then I create pieces for the theater. I work at that and I play through, I rehearse, I keep warm, I you know, warm the, uh, the performance pieces that are in my repertoire. I think that when two beings enter into sincere relationship, the work of the spirit is being done. And I care about that thought. And when actors are on stage in the best of circumstances, and I in the skin of a character I'm playing, and you in the skin of a character that you're playing, look at one another and sincerely want something in a very pretend context that we treat deadly seriously, I contend that there is something that goes back and forth that doesn't happen on film. Film freezes everything in time and space. And this is alive right in, right in front of you, the spectator. I think that's a, a, a very special thing. When I told you of our lives before we came on I like theater best when it is seen as a means of researching the human condition, when it's seen as a way of talking to one another meaningfully about our experience of our own existence. If, if I could do one job in the theater for people, mm -hmm. I think it would be this. I think it would be to, to shed some kind of light on the idea that what we want from life is not to be found where society is telling us to look for it. Life has no meaning other than its own fullness. And I think I would like to steer the people I love, which is basically humanity at large, uh, toward the idea that, uh, that the meaning that will satisfy us and the fullness that we uh, crave is in the kinds of things that theater at its best has to sell. Mm -hmm. The strength of relationship, uh, 
the quality of listening, the quality of presence, the uh, warmth and passion and commitment that can go back and forth between people. Nikos Katsanzakis wrote in the preface to his book, The Greek Passion, God doesn't like weak minds or weak bodies. He coaxes us to be strong in the struggle at the physical level and at the uh, moral level, at the emotional level. I think I would like to consecrate my efforts to reinforcing that thought, that, that message.